everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. I'm here with Kevin McCurley from New England Reptile Distributors in Plastown, New Hampshire. And I uh, got a lot of requests for uh, IBD, snake related diseases. I can't really talk very well on that, but I know Kevin knows a hell of a lot more than I do, so I'm going to let him take it over. All right, so Jason was just, we want to talk a little bit about like boa constrictors. Boas are classic known for like IBD situations. So if you're keeping boas in any period of time, you certainly have heard things as uh, said as IBD, inclusion body disease, but generally what that is, it uh, manifests itself where we walk into our room and we play with our favorite boa and then suddenly the boa, it, it, its motor skills are irregular, so instead of the animal managing its, its head like this, so it knows where the ground is, know its level, it's not doing this, unless you're a spider ball, but we're not talking about that. So, but a boa would normally be doing this and it moves, it will do this thing. When animals start doing this kind of loopy kind of stuff, that is uh, an issue with the, the motor skills. And so basically, IBD is a, is a loose term, but we're gonna basically think of it as like a retrovirus. So boa constrictors, boa constrictor, constrictor, boa constrictor, imperator, all the different other boas uh, can certainly harbor it. And it's, it's highly contagious in the fact that I can have an animal exhibiting it and I can expose other animals to it via air or so you know air bone it's floating around or it's on a water dish I touch water touch another dish I've contaminated that and these viruses in theory can live outside of the body like 24 48 hours so that's just it can just live on the surface or something like that so if, if I have a snake over here and it's a boa constrictor and it has IBD and it's it's blooming. Let's think about it like it's blooming this virus. This virus is airborne. It's also on the surface. And I come in and touch it. I touch an animal and I go off and touch another snake. In theory, I've just basically taken this contaminant and, and offered it to another healthy animal. And either that animal can fend it off with a strong immune response, but sometimes even animals with strong immune systems are still going to suffer from the, the condition, the IBD. And so basically IBD, so we're looking, and animal has this motor skill problem. Another thing, look at the eyes. So if we look at the pupils of the, of the snake's eye, so that's like literally the center of the eye. And if you compare one pupil to the other pupil of the same snake, and you see dissimilar. In the same light. Yeah, in the same go, light. Like don't go face Yeah, don't take a bright go. light and, you know, because this as you put a light into a normal uh, snake's eyes, its pupil is going to become smaller as it lets in less light. So you want to see if you see any dissimilar or irregular uh, pupil size, shape, whatever. Those are also other things. So a couple of things to consider here. What we know about IBD, you can have a very perfectly healthy animal. Have it for eight years. And then one day you come in and your animal is acting weird. They also uh, will often lose uh, muscle uh, control or you notice that they're, they're the feel and the condition of the animal from touching the snake, it's very firm, you know, snakes are all this muscle and you, you know what to expect from a healthy animal. But sometimes when you touch a boa and it has IBD, you'll start noticing they're, they're kind of soft. Certainly they're not uh, the classic healthy looking animal, so you need to be able to assess that. But classic animals, looping, uh, failing to thrive, failing to eat, all the different stuff. So as soon as you see a snake with that, do the first thing you must do, quarantine that. And I mean, get it away from your other animals. IBD from boas is highly contagious to pythons. That's generally why we don't keep many boas here at NERD. I keep very limited boas. I like to keep my boas with Jason. And so I keep, you know, we have boas together and it's nice. You don't have all sorts of mixed things. But uh, IBD in boas is, is highly lethal for uh, pythons. Uh, and there really is no cure for it. So. We basically, it's inclusion body disease. So basically what it means is that something, uh, this, this virus has jumped the blood brain barrier. So these little blood vessels in the brain, and this is actually, it gets into the brain tissue. It can cause a swelling of the, the, the animal's cranium. So it causes edema and that edema can then uh, basically create pressure on the optic nerve or just the motor nerves and it'll affect the eyes and it'll affect the motor function. So you start getting this animal that really has a hard time figuring out what is level and it no longer can function like a normal animal. And it, you know, it's gonna panic sometimes and all that kind of stuff. But once inside the brain matter, there's really no, no great way to, to deal with the virus. Uh, you need a very specific type of antiviral 
drug that can kill that exact virus. And once it's in the, the, the gray matter of the brain of the animal, it's, it's really kind of out of the, the place where you can get medicine to it. So any kind of brain kind of injury, something like that is really traumatic. But uh, you need to really, you know, source your animals from, uh, you know, just buying animals that shows, you know, buy a boa here and buy a boa here and a boa here and a boa here. It's just a matter of time before you're going to see this condition. Uh, so what else do you want to say about uh, that? I guess another thing is, is Kevin touched on pythons. It seems to affect pythons a lot quicker than boas. So if you do keep pythons and boas together, you're going to end up with a dead python a lot faster than you're going to end up with a dead boa. The boa will have it, harbor it, and not show any symptoms, but uh, your pythons will almost immediately start being affected. They'll start regurgitating food. And, and another item is that there's a lot of things that cause similar symptoms to IBD. So just because your boa is neurologically not functioning correctly doesn't mean it has IBD. Um, too much mic spray, too high of heat, things like that. If it all of a sudden your thermostat breaks and the heat goes up. Too much mic spray. Too much mic spray. I've seen that. I mean, I had a snake that, that was all screwed up, did this kind of wobbly, and it lost all coordination. Um, IBD affects the neurological uh, coordination of a snake. So there's a lot of different things that cause neurological symptoms in, say, in snakes. So one specific one that I've seen often and, and a lot is the mite spray, prevent the mite, they won't use it properly, and that's a more permanent neurological. But from the IBD that I've seen, the best way I can describe it is it looks like your snake is possessed. Your, your snake just moves in all different ways. It'll tie itself in knots. It'll do a lot of really odd things that when you see it, you'll know exactly what it is. And, and uh, it's, I see a lot of people take pictures and the snake's just facing their vent to the cage, and that's all it's doing. It's not, it doesn't have IBD, well, it could have IBD, but 99.9% .9 of the time, those pictures are not IBD pictures. It's just a snake that's picking its head up in the air. IBD, this snake would be looping itself backwards and twisting around. It has no idea where it's going. So other than that, that's... I act like I have IBD. Yeah, like Kevin may have IBD. It may I have might, IBD. naturally. I might be a, uh, he might a be walking a zoonic yeah. contaminant vector. So it's something that you shouldn't be freaked out about. It's, it's not extremely common. Uh, but it is fairly common, as if that makes any sense at all. Uh, it's nothing that you should, uh, you know, kill all your boas, and it, it would be good if you got them tested. There's a couple labs, I believe there's two in the United States, one in Florida and Texas. So the one thing about that, it's not a simple test, so they actually, what they do is they biopsy, which actually means that they literally punch through the, the body cavity of the animal into the liver, and they take a sample of the liver. Now, I'm not going to say I'm up to the latest, greatest new uh, information always, because uh, diseases... <laughs> Are not fun. I'm just, you know, certainly aware of a lot of things. So I just take some of uh, my awareness, my information that I know, and I'm trying to pass it on. Yeah. Jason's always asking me questions and stuff like that because he's stupid, and I'm really smart. <laughs> well, well, there's and there are a couple new tests out there. The virus has morphed into a lot of different strains now. I believe there's six or seven different strains of it, and there's a lot more labs. There, there's some cheaper tests you can go. They're usually blood or a swab. And uh, there's some people out there that know a lot more about this than I do, and, and uh, Kevin knows a lot, but I'm sure there's people who know a lot more than he does about this specific topic. So this isn't meant to be a... Because I'm spending all my time specializing water monitors. Look at that. So it's, um, it, it's definitely one of those things that... Cute. that uh, the, the blood tests, they're not as... My understanding is, is that the, <laughs> the blood tests are not as accurate because the body... The blood tests and tissue swabs, or I should say... Uh, um, mouth swabs, saliva swabs, those are based on the boa producing inclusion bodies, which my understanding is that any time that you have a virus in your body, you're going to produce inclusion bodies. So just because you test it, it shows up positive for IBD, uh, which is inclusion body disease, doesn't mean that you have a positive specimen. Same way is just because it shows up negative doesn't mean it's not positive, it just means it's not producing enough or the sample didn't get there fast enough to actually show a positive. So that's all I'm going to say on this. I'm playing with monitors, snuffles is running around. Hot. That was not a ball. Sweating. I am sweating. So, yeah. uh, all right, yeah. we're Thanks. we're done. Thanks, guys. Make sure you click subscribe. Kevin has a YouTube channel. Check his. No stuff one out. knows that I have a YouTube channel. It's yeah. uh, New England Reptile Distributors on YouTube, and I talk about all sorts of nonsense. Yeah, all kinds of really good stuff lately too. So check it out.